Hello, first of all, thank you for buying the olive. And this is a very, uh, what is it? Short video, hopefully, on how to set one up. Okay, so if you get the olive out of the box, this is what we should have. Yep, yeah. and also in the box, actually shoved in another box within the olive, there'll be um, rolled up length of uh, air pipe and an air compressor, along with a few other bits and bobs. Um, now, separately should arrive a bag of ceramic filter media, okay? Now, you need to put those, that ceramic filter media, in the three mesh bags supplied. So you end up with three of these. Yeah. Now, the reason behind that is so though, though these um, ceramic um, filter media can then be placed symmetrically inside the olive. Now, the first one, I'm going to, now actually, this is better to do in the water, but uh, I'm just going to show you how to do it here because it's just easier to illustrate. Okay. So we just put this one at the back and just push it over because we want to have it symmetrically in there. We push that one right at the back there, but because I've got this tipped up so the camera can see, let's just put a light on. Um, but I'm sure you could see that anyway. Yeah, so I'm just pushing that, that media to just go should just go back in there, yeah. In fact, what I'm going to do now is um, take this off. Okay. So it's just going to tip back the way it should be, and then that that can go in. The next one. It's a bit easier, just at the side, and. This one, the other way. So now we've got all three symmetrically in the bottom there. And we need them symmetrically in the bottom so that this thing is gonna float level in the water, okay? Um, also, what will be supplied is some more biomedia. This is, a, um, it's called K1. And uh, this is a neutrally buoyant biomedia which uh, floats around and gets agitated. And that uses a sort of slightly different technique uh, to filtering the water. Instead of having a huge surface area like this stuff has, this relies on the fact that it's moving around and um, colliding with each other and exposing fresh sites of biofilm buildup. And that's a really uh, very efficient way of removing nutrients from the water because those newly exposed areas are very efficient at taking out nutrients. And that goes in as well. <clears throat> now there's um, an air pipe, one of the air pipes, which will have a, which will have a little air stone on there. Um, I also supply this two inch air stone and that goes on instead. And then that one can go inside this mesh bag, okay, and then you tie that one off. In fact, they all should be tied off, obviously. And that larger air stone acts as a weight, but also, it, uh, obviously the air from it agitates that media. Okay, um, now it's probably best for me to put this in the water and then just to show how to set the different air levels coming out of this manifold. Oh, this is the um, the air feed into it. Oh, that's something I've forgotten. Um, <clears throat> so when you when you get it, okay. Obviously, this air pipe just plugs into the bottom there. Yep. Just that bob fitting there. It's also got a little eyelet uh, if you wanted to attach a rope. If you wanted to anchor it somewhere. But there's no need really, uh, it'll stay where it is determined by this pipe. Okay, and then the other end of the pipe, the other end of the pipe goes into the compressor, like that. Okay, now this is a bit confusing because I've actually put this bit of 
Um, a little sleeve of normal, um, what do you call that, um, hose pipe. And the reason for that is for those of you who are going to connect it to an existing um, air loop in the pond, which uses normal 15 millimeter pipe, then um, if you just slide, slide a collar of this, you know, normal um, uh, well, hose pipe, um, it just broadens it out to the right diameter and then you can just push it in. So there's 15 millimeter domestic uh, fittings with that just pushed in. So that's just to show that's how to tap it in uh, to your existing uh, air system in an organic pool. Um, obviously you don't need this huge length, this 30 meter length if that was the case. This is just provided for somebody uh, who wants an olive in a standalone situation. So um, that just pushes on there, which will be a bit easier without that collar on there. Um, and that should be ready to go. So normally you uh, put the olive in the water before you put the media in, but uh, I'm just going to keep the media in and drag it in. Okay. And now it's just a case of putting it in suitably deep water, <clears throat> about 50 centimetres deep minimum. And then let's just sink it. Oh, spider, spider. Spider. Okay, now I'm just going to turn the air compressor on. Air is now being supplied, but none is getting through to any of the uh, airlift pumps in there because we've got all these valves set to uh, zero flow, which is just perpendicular to the, the pipe. Yeah. So if we just turn one on, it's going to it's going to start flowing. Uh, so if it's in line with the pipe, it's flowing. And anywhere in between is, you know, an adjustment. It's halfway. Yeah. See, um, that's, this is actually the controlling the, the amount of flow going out of the olive. <coughs> um, but that's a bit premature to get that going. <coughs> so, oh, another spider. Um, uh, the first thing to do is uh, just get it sort of floating, sort of roughly in the right place. Now, at the moment, the alpha grog is dry, um, but as it absorbs more water, then it's going to get heavier, um, or the effective mass of it will get heavier, because at the moment it's got lots of air spaces in there, which are keeping it uh, overly buoyant. So after a few days, uh, it will become less buoyant. Um, so in the meantime, it's best to trim best to trim the um, um, the buoyancy of it with some stones. So I've just got a mesh bag here with some gravel in. I supply some mesh bags so you can put them in. Um, and we'll just put that inside here and just see where that gets us. What we're aiming for is the water level to be about halfway up the mouth of this skimmer input. So about halfway up there, so about an inch of water uh, we want there. Um, and then we can look at it and see whether it's, it's level or not. And I see at the moment it's actually tipped down this way a bit. So that is just a matter of reorganizing the, the alpha grog and those gravel and that gravel um, into, you know, shifting it around until it starts to uh, float symmetrically. Once you've got all that sorted, this is only, it's only a one-off job, obviously. Um, you know, it's just like that forever. Um, and it's, it's, it's really quite simple. But um, you do need to get it level <clears throat> for it to work effectively. If it's tipped up on its side, 
and water won't be able to get in, it'll be pumping out, um, you know, uh, it needs to be level to work. Uh, but that's very easy to adjust. Um, <clears throat> a matter of twiddling. Um, that's sort of about it. And let's have a look at the, this is the, the main vortex filter. And this main inlet here is controlled by this valve. So if I just open that up, yeah, you see the water being sucked down into there. So that's the middle one of this left hand side uh, on the manifold. I just stop that. This one is for another pump. It's actually in the vortex filter as well, but it's down at the bottom. So anything that sinks gets taken by this one down at the bottom and ends up coming up into this filter. Anything that floats goes down there and comes out this one. Okay, now this other, this third one here on this side, you just have just trickling over and what that's doing, that's self-cleaning the bottom because what will happen inside here is the biofilm will build up on that ceramic media. So this is a very gentle uh, ticking over of uh, a self-cleaning process. So we can just have that ticking over and that's bringing up uh, dead biofilm that's um, before it starts to decompose, let's bring it up from the bottom, bring it into this filter and then you periodically clean this filter. So this filter collects not only the uh, dead biofilm, it collects the surface um, pollen and dust uh, via this one and also the, the debris uh, either from the filter or from input here that actually sinks comes up and goes in here. So all three, all, all the forms of um, um, uh, filtrate, if that's the word, uh, end, up, end up in here. All the stuff we don't want ends up in here. And that's just a case of pulling that out periodically, uh, putting it in a bucket of pond water, giving it a rinse, and pushing it back in, and then it's clean again. Oh, incidentally, we had this has got a slope on here. We tried to preserve that slope so that any animals that get in or get sucked in there if they're amphibians, they can come, on, come up here and climb out. So it's very animal friendly. Um, so we can have these, we can have these going, ticking, we've just had that one ticking over. We have the central one for the vortex and the other one for the one at the bottom. And now we see quite a healthy, healthy flow going on here. Now, this is the skimmer input and as we see there's nothing actually coming in at the moment and that's because we're not taking anything out of the olive this that's where this one comes in so if we start this pump going that's a nice flow coming out it's drawing water out of here and out of the main chamber and then what we'll see is that as this starts to reorganize its levels, we'll see water coming in here. I can see one problem already is this actually on a slope like that, so we're being a bit starved of water up there. So I need to shuffle, shuffle this stuff up here. As I say, it'll take a couple of days for this um, ceramic media to sort itself out. I'm just gonna stick some more gravel in down here as a quick fix. Um, and stop pumping out so rapidly, but I think at the moment I'm going to need a bit more gravel. Uh, um, I'm just going to get another stone or something. Oh yeah. <coughs> this is going to be a bit excessive I think, but let's give it a go. Okay, I'm just trying to get the weight right, so it's a matter of trimming it with stones. Okay, we turn the output up. So this little vortex here is actually taking water from the surface of this. This is the main chamber with the biological media in there. That's where most of the stuff is happening. This is most of the stuff we can see happening. Um, so now we see a flow, see a flow of water in here. 
and we should start to see surface debris being uh, sucked in uh, there. Um, so that's sort of it. Now we just need to set this up. Inside the main chamber we've got two other air stones and uh, these are for these are sort of very flexible. We can have a <coughs> we can have a, um, uh, a plant basket in here growing things like watercress. Uh, I've got one over here, I'll show you. Um, so that's that's been in there a while, but that'll end up get that'll end up going in there. Um, oh, well look at that. Bit of a mess, isn't it? It already all sorted itself out. Um, and this this stuff again, this stuff will take a time to um, become neutrally buoyant. At the moment, it's very buoyant. And if we turn on the the airflow, the airflow is coming to this air stone, and now we see it all being agitated. Yeah, and again, that could be when that's. Um, sinking down, that'll all start to jostle around and be a really good uh, uh, filtration media. Okay. Again, so that needs that needs a bit of time to sort itself out. I'll just put a, <coughs> a stone on top of that just to take it out of the picture for now. Okay. Oh, really, really doesn't want to go, does it? Look at that. Um, anyway. That'll, that'll sort itself out. Um, so that's basically it. I suppose I could put this, put this, uh, these plants in here to show how the effect would be. This is very early in the season. This watercress is just starting to get to get established. I do need to turn that down a bit because um, it's uh, that meter is actually pushing it up. Um, and there is a, actually, and there is another little, another little air stone in here somewhere. Um, oh, that's that one. That's that one. There's another one. Another, another pipe somewhere. There it is. Um, so you can use that. Whatever. I tend to use that in the in the plant tray. Once it's all once it's all sorted, we've missed it. Um, messed it all up in the, the, here at the moment. Once it's all sorted, we can have that ticking over, and that gives a nice little um, um, uh, little bit of agitation to uh, to the watercress, which which really helps it grow. So that's sort of it. Although it does look a bit of a mess at the moment, but it's all actually functioning fine. Um, yeah, bits like this. We need to collect and put back in the bag, but there we go. That is, that's the olive. That's all you need to do to get it set up. Enjoy. Okay, this has been going uh, almost exactly a week now, and um, because we've got ducks in here and a lot of other um, animals uh, pulling up vegetation, there's a lot of, a lot of um, floating debris being, being sucked in, and, um, and the mesh filter, I can see, is really quite clogged now because uh, this is all really, uh, really very deep. Um, so that's very simple, sort out. Just get a bucket and some pond water. Always clean the filter in pond water, never tap water. We don't want to bring that out. Actually, if you have a look, we can see this is, um, filter's all full of gunk. Give it a good rinse. Put some more water in the bucket, but anyway, that's the sort of thing. 
and just put that back. Okay. Let that sort itself out. All the, uh, uh, the other organic matter, this mucky stuff, is going to go back into that vortex and get taken back around again and get reabsorbed by that filter. So there's no need to worry about that. None of it's going to go into the pond. Can't get out that way. Um, so that should stabilise. There we go. And look, at already the olive is floating uh, back to its normal um, sort of position in the water. And the bucket is full of oh, a lot of mucky, a lot of mucky water. I'm just going to pour it out somewhere. Actually, just, oh, so there we go. This is that mucky water. Which is a great fertilizer for these plants. This is a hollyhock. So that'll produce nice flowers in the summer.